0614-104-702. The Car Feature. Time for The Car Feature. We are taking your calls on Audible one double eight three zero seven zero two and the WhatsApp line 072-702-1702. We're talking automotive customization and restoration. We're joined by Alpha Lion, founder of Iron Lion Customs, Ryan Allen LaRue. Now, I must say, Ryan, when I saw your nickname... I, w- I was going to ask you why that's your nickname. Now that I see you in person, I'm like, okay, I get it. Now, for those that are listening, he is exceptionally tall. He's not a small guy. He's quite a big guy. And I actually <laughs> even asked you if you train by pulling cars. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Awesome. Thanks so much for having us on the show. Thanks for this opportunity. And good afternoon to all your viewers, listeners. Yes. So what do what do people say when you tell them your profession? Do you think they respect it or they don't? Because I almost feel like there's been a shift from the the professions that are more technical, that we use our hands. Absolutely. And we're going back to like, yo, guys, the skills are not there anymore. Do you feel like people truly respect the work that you do, especially if they're getting that bill from the German dealership that's like 70,000 rand or 124,000 rand to fix something? Yeah. Look, I do think it's a, a, a respected profession to do nowadays. I mean, it does take some certain skills and whatever the case is to provide that kind of service. To handcraft these vehicles is no joke comparing to a German factory when the guys are using robotics and machines. We mm. are old school using hands and power and whatever the case is. So what we push out is really awesome. And to see those vehicles from scrap to come out brand new again, it's, it's, it's a great feeling. So yes, it's a respected profession, I'd say. How did you get started? Are you one of those kids that um, your dad was under the car, your, an uncle was under the car, and then you just found yourself falling in love with it? Look, I've always been technically minded. You know, I did a lot of mechanical work in technical school and whatnot. So I've loved cars my entire life since I was a little two-year-old, since I could talk. I knew which cars were on the road and whatever oh, wow. the case is. So I've always been a major enthusiast. Ever since I could drive cars, my first was a yellow Beetle and I modified that. So all along my, the time now, I'm what, 42 years old. I've had many cars. I've been privileged enough to have them, and most of them were all modified by myself and friends and whatnot. So I just decided, you know, this is something I'd really love to do. Mm. My background is actually security. I come from the security trade. It makes sense, the bold. (laughs) So I was into into physical security for 15 years, but in that time looking at cars and and modifying cars and thought, well, I sold that business off and thought, well, this would be awesome to actually build dreams and sell smiles. And that's our slogan. So we build your dream and sell you a smile. It's a positive business. Mm. When Mm. something comes in and it's not so lacquer, when it leaves, it's super fresh. It's a nice feeling. For me, it's a, it's a great feeling. It's the feeling I chase. What was the inspiration when you think about that yellow uh, beetle, the first one? Were you thinking to yourself, I want something unique that nobody else has. Absolutely. You want people to sort of be looking. And yes. I'm curious as to what the modifications were that you made to the car. Look, you always want to be unique. I think that's the major thing with, with custom building of cars is you can have a one-of-one, one, a one-off vehicle that no one else can have. Yes. Being, being a lighty at 17 or 18 years old, there's not much you can do to a, a yellow old Skidunk <laughs> Beetle. But it had 6 by 9 sounds in it and a Pioneer radio and it had dropped suspension and tinted windows. Oh, it drop suspension. Yeah, well, it should drop Look suspension with all my mates in the back also. <laughs> you carry 10 to 15 in a load those days. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Okay, so when you decided to get into the space, um, did you just decide to start or did you sort of look at the industry and what people are demanding? Because, you know, I've said this so many times in this car feature, we South Africans have a very different love for cars. Um, You know, I I don't see it in the US. I don't see it in in any of the places I've traveled to in Europe. I have not seen as many German cars in Germany as I have even on the Autobahn in South Africa. Yes. So are you finding that when you got into the space, there was always a demand for doing what you do? Or was it quite saturated? I don't think it's saturated because it's so specialized. There's there's, there's a lot of panel beating guys out there that do this kind of work with more the panel beating side. But the art side of it, the customization, the fabricating side of it, there's not many guys in South Africa that can do it. So ultimately, we want to show the rest of the world what Iron Line Customs can actually push out mm. and put it onto an international stage. But there's definitely a massive demand in the country for it, specifically now with the new car prices being so expensive. A lot of guys will keep their older cars now and rather reinvest into that car and make it look super cool and super fresh again. So that's quite a big gap in the market. We modify old, and old cars from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and now we're starting to look at cars from now – two, three years old.
Mm. People are holding their second-hand cars a little bit longer. So they might want to do a wrap or spray the rims black or mm. do some software tuning or whatever the case is. So definitely a, a large growing demand in the country for mm. customization of cars, specifically your once-off builds. Yes. You might have a VW Polo and a guy wants a wide body kit on it. We do that. You know, there's so much metal work that we can do. We fabricate the entire shape of the vehicle so you can have that once-off, one-of-one custom car build. So does that mean that you don't have a love for brand new cars in your personal life because there is something be- beautiful in taking something Absolutely. that needs yes. love and care? Yes. That's a funny story that actually comes with age. Yeah. You know, when I was in my 30s, I was into brand new fast cars and whatever the case it's is. It's the smell. It's the you smell, You know that, that brand new car yes. smell and but you, you want... you should smell the leather smell on a restored car. It's Ooh. also it's, it's phenomenal. So, yeah, I had the privilege of having some nice fast cars and whatever the case is in my younger days. But when you get into your 40s, it, your, your mindset changes. So now it's more of getting that old truck, an F100 truck, and putting a Lexus motor into it, a 300 horsepower motor, uh, air conditioning, power steering, really looks really cool. And hitting the road on a Sunday and whatever the case is, is nothing better than that. Mm. An old car that you bring back into today's time, we call it a resto mod. Mm. So we use the old cars and we modify them so they can drive. I can get in that truck now and I can drive down to Cape Town comfortably mm. and mm. have a once-off customized build. That's, that's the cool part about it. So what are your thoughts out of curiosity of all the brand new, more accessible cars? I mean, when we speak about cars that have gotten very expensive I mean, people are driving houses, basically. It's <laughs> you crazy, know? the price of cars. Yes, but now you've got, you know, all these new brands that are coming out, yes. the Cherries, the Havals, no, Beijing, cool. right? Yeah. What, are, what are your thoughts on what maybe the mod game is going to look like in, let's say, 15 years? Because these new cars are more techy, Absolutely. and maybe I'm wrong, as opposed to more physical, manual. I don't know if I'm making sense with yes. my question. Yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. Look as in, fine. like, you might reach a point where you can't do as much because things now get plugged into machines. I don't think we'd ever run out of business. I think that people are always going to look to to keep their rides. You know, if it's going to be us modernizing that old school ride and putting touchscreen tablets in it and Rockford mm. Forescate sound and modernizing it. But if I look at all the Chinese cars that are entering our country, they're, they're really good. Mm. I mean, for someone who can't afford a Range Rover, you can get a Cherry and it, it's, a, it's a nice driving vehicle. It looks good. It's got all the bells and whistles, which is really cool. So it's affordable. So if you can afford a Cherry, then you can afford to go and get yourself a custom ride for the weekends. Yes. You know, if you're driving a Range Rover, that's most likely the only car you have. So, yeah, I'm all for the... And for the, please, if you're in a Range or any SUV <laughs> or fast car, could we not see you stuck on the side of the road without petrol? Just putting it out there. <laughs> but that's the reality of the economy we're in at the moment. Unfortunately, yes. Okay, so let's talk restoration first. Sure. Do you, when you say risk restoration, because you spoke earlier about scrap. Yes. I mean, are your bare minimums like it needs to have an engine or you'll even just take a body? We'll take a body. We'll take something, you know, it all depends on the, on the actual shell. So if it's really rusted to hell and gone, then there's nothing we can do about it. But if it's minimal rust, we do fabrication, we cut out the rust, we put in new metal and we build the car right from the ground up with our bare hands. Yes. So that includes suspension, um, your motor, your cooling system, your interior, your sound system, the, the entire thing gets done. Normally it takes us between three, six and nine months, sometimes 12 months, depending on the size of the build. But we really refabricate an entire car, which is customized to your specific needs. What you ask me is what you get. Mm, yeah. mm. So the, the reason I love the work that, you know, a specialist like yourself does is that people have certain physical disabilities where they would need modifications done in their vehicles. What kind of mods have you done? Because um, people will see a person in a wheelchair and be shocked that they can drive their own vehicle. Um, or a person, I saw a gent um, who I think has um, half of his limbs, but he can still drive. It was modified specific, right. specifically for him. Right. Have you ever dealt with clients that needed cars to be physically in a way that can accommodate them? So we haven't personally done any of those modifications to mm. cars, but we have worked on cars like that. Yes. You'd get a client that's in a wheelchair and the car will come in for an interior or it will come in for a gearbox service or whatever the case is. So it's quite often that we've had, sure, we had three, four, five of those kind of mm. modified vehicles. A friend of mine also drives a, a BMW, I think it's a 330 that's modified very nicely for him. Mm. That's, a, that's an awesome part of life. You know, if you're in a wheelchair and you can move around every day in a nice fast car and you can control it in whatever the case is, it's, it's, it's quite a lot of fun to actually drive the car yourself and see how it all actually works. Is it uh, common yet in, in, in South Africa to be able to, for example, 
take a um, a car that usually has a gear changing stick, yes. stick shift, sorry, yes. that's the word I was looking for, and moving that to your steering wheel, for example? Yes, oh. absolutely, that's possible. Look, a lot of these older, older cars have got um, automatic gearboxes, mm. so it's an automatic shifter. Some of them are manual, but most of ours, we use a Lexus V8 in this country. It's 300 mm. horsepower motor. It's got power steering, air conditioning, good horsepower, good torque, and that comes with a gearbox. It comes with a six-speed automatic gearbox. So Tiptronic is something that we can do. It is available. The Lexus gearbox does come with it, but I haven't installed any of them yet. Mm. And the guys still like that, that experience of touching the lever and whatever the case is on an older all the kind of car. I think I'm also old school like that. I, I even struggle with automatic. I feel like I need to be in control yeah, of the revving. Yeah, that's a dying sport. And <laughs> that's a dying sport in our country. The guys that don't like, even my children, they're not interested in a, a manual gearbox. Oh, they really? Want, yeah, that's a big thing with the, with the Lattes. They all want automatic BMW and whatever the case is. So manual is a, is a dying trade, unfortunately. Yeah, that's I, where the fun's at. Right, and I mean, you look at the US, they even do their driving tests with automatics. Not that's all right. of them can actually drive... Yes. A stick shift. So let's talk then about the mods. If somebody comes in and says, okay, I've got a, you know, 90s car. It's a classic. It could be a Merc or some VW classic. It's in good condition. I want to bring life to it. What are the things you start asking them to getting them to think about? Because I think sometimes people don't come because they feel like they need to already have the money and the vision in place. Whereas your job is to be the creative as well right, and to come right. up with cool things that they can do with their cars. That's it. That's the fun part for me. I love marketing, so that's my game. Yes. So the client would come in and let's say for an example, he has an SL 450. The first question I'd well, ask him. SL 450 is. Mercedes Benz. Yes. Okay. I was trying to remember yeah. the body. It's the one that was the very hard. Yes. Big body. What's that, what's that um, program called? From uh, Dallas, Dallas. <laughs> yes, so the yes, SL450 that right. yes, came from Dallas, yes. which you've actually built a replica on that one. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. So the first question I'd ask my customer is: Are you looking at going resto mod, which is where we use your original vehicle but we put new modern components into it? So you lose that classic kind of vibe. Wait, by modern components, do you mean aesthetically or functional? Functionally Functional. and aesthetically. Oh, okay. Yes. So he would choose: Does he want a classic restoration, or does he want a resto mod in, uh, done? So if it's a classic, we keep to the original, original parts of the vehicle. We re-chrome the entire vehicle. We take it right down to bone metal. So all the paint comes off the vehicle mm. down to the metal. We do rust deletion and whatever the case is, and fabricate where we need to. We then offer him a new interior. So we duplicate the original interior, perfectly cloned. We do the suspension. If the engine requires a rebuild, we'll rebuild it. Um, it's a dying trade also, I must say, with all the old Mercedes Benzes. All these mechanics from back in the day are really getting old now. Mm. So we're losing that skill of the guys that can work on those old school BM, uh, Mercedes Benzes and BMWs. Because the well. younger people are trained in the, uh, trained in the, the newer young, ones. Younger guys yeah. are going more the technology side of things, the software kind of things and yeah. whatnot. So that would be the, the classic uh, restoration where we refabricate the original vehicle. So as in... It's going to be like you bought it Brand back then in, in the 90s or That's 80s. Yes. yes. Okay. Complete. And then your resto mod would be, if someone came to me with an SL 450, we would talk about a, a motor swap. So I would always, in this country, it's affordable. We would look at the Lexus V8, which is 300 horsepowers. We've also got the LS motors that we could also look at, but it would be a Lexus. A lot of guys don't particularly like putting a Toyota motor into a, into a Mercedes Benz. I mean, I get into we, a lot can, of trouble we can for that. understand why, yes. but maybe talk to us about the fact that, um, I mean, I saw somewhere that BMW owns Rolls Royce and yes. a lot of Rolls Royce has BMW parts, for example. Yes. This is not common knowledge. 100%. And because I feel like as South Africans, we're very much into status. Yes. Some people would be gutted yeah. to know Yes. What parts you have in your car, and then you're like, "Why did I pay all this money?" Yes, hundred percent. But it's for the badge, hundred percent. So maybe chat to us about why some brands, you know, play within different parts. Yeah. Why would you put a Toyota in a Merc? I mean, so it all comes down to two things. It comes down to affordability and reliability. Mm. So I love the Toyota Lexus motor. As I mentioned, I get into quite a lot of trouble putting that motor into various brands of vehicles. But when it comes to reliability, I want to be able to get in a vehicle and drive it from here to Cape Town and not have to break down five or six times down the road. Or having to find some specialist that can redo that motor on the way down to the road. Yes. So it all depends. I mean, if you look at a C63 AMG motor, it's yes. an amazing motor to drop that into a, um, 
into a SL would be amazing to do the conversion, but it's so expensive. It's almost unaffordable in our country. What's, what's expensive about it? Buying the thing? The motor's the expensive. Ad- oh, yeah. okay. I if got you. If I think you. off the top of my head, it's probably 350,000 Rand for that motor on its own. I've seen some guys put it into Toyota Hiluxes. It's absolutely what? phenomenal. What? Yeah, it's absolutely mind blowing. You lie. Yeah, yeah. But you know, those people, you know, the people, I feel like the people that can afford to do that. Those are the people yes. living in twenty million rand houses, Absolutely. and it's 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 a it's not like you're saving up for a th- Correct. you know Correct. it's a it's a certain level. That's it. So we cater for all ends of the market. Doesn't matter how small or how big you are, we will be able to give you some sort of a customization to your vehicle. The big customs in that is not. It's a very small percentage of our mm. country that are actually investing that kind of money into these vehicles. Um, as in the more expensive yes. and the more uh, yes. very niche yes. type of customizations. Yeah. 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 So let's use something practical. Let's say I decide to buy, um, I see a 30,000 Rand a, a Beetle. It's on sale and and it's it's buy food stew. It's just as <laughs> is, right? And I don't even know what I want to do with it. Maybe I'm like, I might want to sell it. I might want to do it to sell it or I just want it as a weekend fun car my budget is 50,000 Rand what could you do realistically because I think sometimes when we have these conversations it feels very far-fetched for many people but sure. you can do simple things but yeah. just adding a new color and that already brings life to the car Yeah, 100% something like a VW Beetle nowadays is really uh, starting to gain traction with the value of that vehicle I've seen you some wish of you these... kept your first one absolutely <laughs> Absolutely. I've seen some of them selling for 450,000 What? Which is a hell of a lot of money for an old Beetle. We've done a few of those. We've done full customization or restoration on a Beetle right down to the, to the chassis, which actually looks like a fork when you strip it down. And the engine was rebuilt in interior and paint and bodywork. We actually took different sections of different Beetles and put them into one. My and the goodness. vehicle really came out really nicely. So at the end of the day, it's all about what you can afford to spend on a vehicle. You know, the one thing in this country is people don't really understand the amount of time and, and labor that goes into stripping a vehicle down. Yes. You know, it's, you, you've got to know what you're doing in reality to get the paint off and not go too deep into the metal and to cut it and to fabricate new components. So it's rather expensive. For 50,000 Rand, you could get yourself a basic spray job and possibly a new interior on a vehicle like that. Mm. Yeah. So you can give it some life. All right. There's a question that was asking if you can build a 1965 Ford Mustang from scratch. Well, there's there's different options with that. So there's a company, an Asian company, that actually remanufactures the Mustang shell, which is really cool. So you've got that old, say, 69 Fastback shell, which can be imported into this country, and we can then build you a brand new Mustang, but that old school look. That's where we're also going now, that the Defenders, the Discovery Defenders, we have got contacts overseas that we can actually buy a complete brand new shell. So you the, get a brand new car at the end of the day. Yes, yes. Handcrafted. And then another message, and I'm going to answer for you. The message says, Hi, Rilem Gilen Gis. Fascinating, interesting conversation. Uh, do you guys take young ones for internship? My son loves what these guys do. He's a qualified mechanical engineer with honors. I'll listen on the radio. Fantastic. I'm going to answer yes. <laughs> yeah, look, we do. When we can, we do, because it's so specialized. Mm. So there's so much for you to learn. But we've got a good few lighties in the business that are learning from the ground up. And I like to see that as well. You get a lighty in and he starts off working in a storeroom and he works his way up to a mechanic mm. or a spray painter. So the opportunities are there. We do get quite a lot of uh, Instagram comms with the lighties and whatever the case is and want to get into the business. And we've taken a couple of them on. I so know you're old school by you saying the lighties. I'm like, he's, so, he's from my generation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do we get in touch? Uh, you can check us out on Instagram. We've got a strong following on Instagram. That's Ironline Customs. You'll check it there. We've got our website, www.ironline.co.za. And, yeah, you can get through to me on my cell phone number. It is on the Instagram. I run the business. I um, It's an open-door policy. You deal personally with me. You're not dealing with anybody else. That's the one thing with my business is you come to see me. We'll design the vehicle together, and uh, I'll give you weekly feedback and whatever the case is. And, yeah. Thank you so, so much for your time. Thanks so much for the opportunity. I love being here. Thank you.